So we actually have a variety of programs uh, for the eSports Association. One is career readiness. So we actually work with the Career Center here to better prepare our association members to learn those life skills that they are going to need so that when they make that transition over to a career pathway. Awesome, awesome. This guy, this guy, we got to turn around. This guy wins almost every tournament we throw. I'm telling you. <laughs> you got to watch the buy. It's going to be something big. I'm telling you. CSUDH Esports Association is centered in four domains academics and research, community engagement, competition, and entertainment. We're trying to make sure that the students are prepared for the future, that they understand the diversity that media offers now, and again, look beyond the traditional outlets. They can gain fieldwork, partnerships, as well as potential job opportunities, and in both the higher education and, and K-12 fields. We believe that esports is a strategy and not an outcome. Our association is here to help anyone that is willing to learn how to take your gaming skills to the next level through a supporting community. If you are looking to showcase your production talents to help support our esports teams, then this is the association for you. We host online and on-site tournaments that will allow our members to showcase their competitive spirit. Our association broadcasts out our competition and practices to entertain our community as well as our global audience. We believe that by joining us, you will come out of the association feeling transformed and better prepared to transfer your skills into your career. Join today and begin to explore endless opportunities through our eSports Association here at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Running in for backup. Yo, Ron, he's right there in front of you. Oh, sorry, guys, it happened again. Damn, that's the tough one today. All right, I'm back. Someone cover me. You got him, you got him. Woo! Yo, that's sweet. Yeah, it is. We about to win this. I can get used to this. HyperX Alloy. Built strong because it has to be. Located in the heart of Los Angeles, one of the most culturally diverse cities in the U.S., Children's Hospital Los Angeles welcomes children and families from all over the world. With over 350 pediatric specialty programs and services, Children's Hospital Los Angeles is consistently ranked among the top programs by U.S. News and World Report. Our physicians include nationally and internationally renowned experts in their fields, working alongside our care teams all with a single mission to do everything we can to create hope and build a healthier future for your child. Home to the Saban Research Institute at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, the finest minds in the world come together to drive discoveries and find leading edge cures for children everywhere. Here, your child comes first. Every aspect of our hospital is designed with patients and families in mind, from x-ray machines that use less radiation to play spaces that let your child be a child. We understand your child's health condition might lead you to seek the best care outside your own country. That's why Children's Hospital Los Angeles' Center for Global Health is here to help. We are your home away from home. The Center for Global Health offers international families one point of contact to facilitate seamless, culturally sensitive care for hundreds of children from more than 75 countries. It's a place of hope, healing, and compassion. Children's Hospital Los Angeles, creating hope and building healthier futures around the world.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to another esports talk session. I am your host and moderator, Ruben Caputo from CSUDH Esports, and today's talk session is called Prolonged Sitting and Esports The Reality of Injury and Disease. But before I introduce our special guest, um, I just want to go over a couple of quick announcements. And that is, uh, we want to thank you, the viewers, the big supporters that log in and tune in to our channels. Uh, we have various social sites that you can find down below. Feel free to leave a like, follow, subscribe, all of the above. And we also want to share that all of our streams uh, that we do, we dedicate to the Extra Life Foundation uh, in an effort to help the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles any kind of in-kind effort, you'll find it in the description below. Feel free to click in, and if you feel very charitable, please do so. Okay, and of course, last but not least, but to our big partners and sponsors in HyperX, who are our official gaming peripheral partner. Uh, this particular microphone that you see here is the HyperX Quadcast HX Mic QC, where you can find it in the link in descriptions below. All right, without any further ado, let's get into it. Our special guest is Elise Freeman, one of our very own who comes from our health and wellness division, joining us today. Elise, welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so Elise, I mean, this is a very particular um, uh, uh, topic here because it's really hard to not think of esports and not seeing a visual of people sitting down because it's very sedentary in, in many ways uh, when you're actually competing or practicing and you're playing the games that you love. So I guess just to jump right into it, um, you know, what are some of the best practices that you would recommend for those uh, that are tuning in and thinking, gosh, uh, what should I be aware of? Yeah, definitely. And you're absolutely right. That's the main picture we see. If it's not the cover of a game, um, it's somebody either cheering in the background. <laughs> and then the next shot that you see is somebody definitely sitting tuned in into the game. So it is something that's very um, important that we need to become a lot more cognitive of when it comes to us sitting. Um, but I would say the biggest thing that people need to be aware of is just the simple concept of taking a break. And, you know, it sounds really simple, it sounds really easy. Uh, people hear it all the time, take a break, take a break, take a break. But at the same time, I don't think that A, people do it 100% of the time, and B, when they do do it, especially within the realm of esports, I don't think that people do it correctly. Now, I'm not saying that there's a deck, uh, like a Webster dictionary version of how to take a break, but um, essentially we wanna take breaks that are gonna be beneficial to our body. And um, the best way that I can explain it is with the, acronym ironically that I came up with um, specifically for esports when I talk to people within this realm um, and it's basically just B-R-E-A-K so you want to of course be which is breathe and so take that moment to like step away breathe do some deep breathing um, look away from the screen you know uh, recenter yourself and then you also want to rest uh, and you might think I've already been resting I've been sitting in a seat this whole time but you're resting in a position that you're playing in which isn't necessarily a resting position um, you want to actually give yourself time to relax your muscles um, because when you are gaming oftentimes we are in a awkward position leaning our neck forward shoulders up things along that nature um you're really tense when it comes to like your postural muscles so you're not really resting in that moment so i would say really take a rest um e would be for e uh nutrition is everything even in a game of a sedentary sport such as esports you want to make sure you're giving your body the fuel that it needs to um, recalibrate and really just keep you going as you sustain um a would be for ambulate which is basically just get up move around walk um use those legs you know what i mean and so then that way you are promoting blood flow and circulation things that the body needs and one thing i'd also encourage um with ambulate is something else i really try to stress stress which is a 60 20 basically meaning every 60 minutes why don't you do something for 20 seconds right and not just one particular thing for 20 seconds but maybe like six things for 20 seconds really just make it an easy concept so whether it's um you know, calf phrases for 20 seconds and then going in, you either do 20 seconds or 20 repetitions. It all really depends on you, but maybe you can go from calf raises uh, to knee raises um, to jumping jacks, something that's really going to help promote that blood flow squat, something that you could just really get out of your seat 
step over and just do in that very moment. Um, so if you're not walking around doing something to really just promote blood flow throughout the body. And then um, for K, which is just keep track. You want to make sure you're keeping track of the next time that you're going to do it again, because you don't want to get into the habit of just sitting there and not keeping track of when your next break will be. Because oftentimes, esports players, and even not esports players, um, people in general, you know what I mean? This concept can apply to anybody. This acronym can be used for anybody, sedentary office workers, um, people who are just at home, big chilling on the weekend, on the couch, anything. Um, just taking that time to step away because an episode on TV is an hour. You know, we can easily sit in game for an hour. Um, you know, multiple things in that hour could turn into two hours, which could turn into three hours. And the next thing you know, we can sit in all day without a break. And if it was, it was maybe just a, a potty break. You know what I mean? What type of break is that essentially? So I would say to answer that question, just really focus in on how you are breaking. So it could be something beneficial to you in your body overall. I love it. Gosh, at least so much was just shared. And I'm going to take it back a little bit um, and, and just go through that acronym together, just because for those that are listening, yeah. uh, we have Elise Freeman here. Uh, she is part of our health and wellness division and kinesiologist uh, consultant. And so uh, maybe even just before we, we even go into taking it back, share for those that are listening uh, perhaps don't know what kinesiology does in studies. Uh, perhaps if you can share a little bit of that background, and then I want to take it back just because you said so much, so many good points that I think hearing it again might be very helpful. And for those that are listening, taking notes, or perhaps this is a good time too to start thinking about questions that you may have for Elise Freeman. Definitely. So, you know, just even going back with like my background in kinesiology overall. So, kinesiology is pretty much the study of movement. You know, it's something that we do every day. It's a gift that we're given, which is movement. Um, and it's just a study of movement in regards to um, making sure uh, when it comes to like exercise science or like the health and fitness realm, making sure you're able to do it fluidly without pain, without um, any disturbances. Uh, that's essentially what we want to work towards, to have um, healthy lives that we're living pain-free and with full mobility. And that's basically what it is, just a study of movement overall. I mean, as far as like my background, I do have a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. I am a Toro. Uh, I graduated from Dominguez Hills. I am proud of that. I did emphasize in pre-physical therapy uh, as my concentration. And right now I'm actually um, just two semesters away from graduating um, at Cal State University of Long Beach, which I'm very proud of. And it's a program I'm very um, humbled and grateful to be a part of. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'll say short and short about my background. But as far as no, no, yeah. <laughs> but as far as the concept overall uh, for any note takers or anything like that, just break. That's the key thing that you want to do, and just kind of repeat it: breathe for B, R for rest, E for eat, A for ambulate, which is just basically walking around, and then K. You just want to keep track of when you're going to do it again because it's essential that you continue to do these very things. It's something that I have to put into a practice. Um, and I would say if anybody is uh, having a hard time putting it to a practice or maybe just embedding it into their memory, set a timer. That's something that I have to do um, because I am a sedentary employee. I sit for a living. And so I have to remind myself to do the very thing that I tell other people to do, which is take a break and actually take a real break, um, not just to go to the bathroom and then come right back and sit down forever um, for an eight hour shift, which many people could do. And, you know, something to even uh, put a little perspective around things when it comes to like research and numbers and things along that nature, as a population, 80% um, of jobs today are sedentary positions. And that is a huge increase, um, even dating back from the 1950s. 1950s, that's an 83% increase from them, um, from that time. And that's something that, uh, this is information that's been provided by the American Heart Association. And like I said, this is a topic that is very interesting to me um, and very near and dear to me. And so because of that, um, I do research it and. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff, even with my work at Cal State Long Beach around this topic as well. Um, but in addition to that, outside of sedentary jobs, when it comes to sitting, people spend a um, majority of their day sitting. 60% of the day and upward is geared towards sitting, whether it's intentionally or not, whether it's, you know, commuting, whether it's at work, whether it's gaming, whatever the case may be. Um, we all have a lot of ha habits and hobbies that we have. And oftentimes they're revolved around being comfortable and sitting in a chair. And, and today in modern society, we have so many uh, comforts and like luxuries. You know, chairs are made for us to enjoy 
that position that we're sitting in. You know, when we think about uh, pillow top mattresses, when we think about ergonomic chairs are all basically constructed for our comfort because as Americans, we love our comfort and we love our luxuries, you know? And so that's the thing, um, society, the way it's equipped has us to do the very thing that I'm encouraging us not to do, which is sit forever. Yeah, no, gosh, uh, so many good points there. And again, just to take it back, um, just, I, I love what you said earlier, first of all, about, you know, yes, you know, we may feel that we're in a comfortable spot, right? But at the same time, sitting down is a form of comfort. And we're trying to essentially take those intentional breaks based off the acronym that you provided, which, again, uh, we'll definitely follow up with everybody, because I think that's very intentional uh, mindset of taking, hey, I'm going to take my break. And this is what it means. And to take, like you said, the restroom breaks, those are not necessarily the breaks that we're looking at. We're looking more of, uh, okay, what am I doing in terms of trying to gain more blood flow and circulation and oxygen? Exactly. Um, and also too, when you're gaming, yeah, you're right. Uh, for those that are listening, I think many can relate, whether you've gamed or not. But essentially, sometimes when you're looking at something, there is a level of seriousness that you take. And so you're probably leaning forward and not relaxing the shoulders and and the posture may be a little off um, and you don't realize it too. I think we all can relate. It's like, oh, I've been sitting like this for some time. No wonder my, my back hurts or, or, you know, I'm straining my eyesight or whatnot. But, um, you know, very important to, to keep those key principles in mind. But you said really helpful help, tips right there, such as uh, timers, yeah. right? Being able to set a timer. Um, and these are done in interval fashion. Is that how you typically, you know, recommend and approach it? Yeah, definitely. So it all depends on the setting. Now for me, um, personally, and I would say maybe even other people who do have sedentary jobs, it might not be most ideal to do an hour because sedentary, now this is getting a little bit away from esports, but a sedentary position, such as a bus driver, a taxi cab driver, um, an office employee, a bank teller, they might not be able to get up every hour going back to that 60 20 concept that i you know explained earlier but if you are doing something such as gaming you have control you have that wonderful pause button you know that you can press at any point of time <laughs> you know you don't have somebody hounding you you don't have somebody over your back now i do get depending on the type of game that you're playing um you do have maybe like a lifespan it is a team effort you know but there are still things it's a reset you know, if you die in the game, it's going to be a couple seconds before you come back. But at the same time, it's going to also be a time in the game where that particular game is over. And, you know, you'll have to be the judge yourself on whether or not it has been an hour or if it hasn't. Now, I would encourage, especially for gamers, to get up within that hour time frame, because compared to maybe like a bus driver or a sedentary office worker, for example, they're maybe not going to be as intense. You know, I'm not going to be um, very passionate and enthusiastic about uh, Excel report, you know, but at the same time, somebody who is participating in a game, you know what I mean? Life is on the line in the sense of like the life that you have in, in, the, in the virtual world, right? But in addition to that, especially if it's a competition, you want to give it your all. And so you might, you know, your hands are going to be tense. Like you said, your back is going to be tense. Um, different things are going to play factors um, when it comes to your muscle skeletal system and the, and the stress that it takes on at that time. So for gamers, I would definitely encourage every hour at minimum to, to get up as much as possible. Um, and if you're not a gamer and you're out here listening, um, I would say as often as you possibly can within your work environment or even within your home environment. And your body will tell you. If nothing else, your body will tell you when it's time to get up. And, you know, I would just advise that you listen to it because uh, it's a tag team effort. Your body will tell you, but you have to take that action um, to actually fulfill what you need to do. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I was just thinking as you were sharing that, at least that perhaps another reverse effect of timing that could be very helpful is, you know, sometimes setting those timers of, hey, these are my breaks, mm -hmm. but perhaps to entertain this idea of another exercise, which is, time yourself for how long you actually sit in the day. Yes. And perhaps that will cause a jaw drop. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll blow your mind. And, and, and towards the statistics that you were talking about earlier, um, I, you know, I believe it's from the American Heart Association about, you know, what percentage we actually spend sitting down. Because uh, you're right, whether, you know, even if you don't necessarily have an office job, you're commuting to work, you know, for some of you that you know, or driving, or if you're taking public transportation, 
typically you're sitting down, right? Um, it's, it's more towards this idea of taking as many micro to macro breaks in this stretch of time, especially on the waking hours of your day. Um, because, well, it, it's, it's going to help in the long run to preserve your health and to avoid the aches that perhaps you're, you're experiencing. Now, based off, you know, some of the, um, let's say athletes or e-athletes that you served, uh, what are the typical aches and pains that you've noticed and has it been from a root source of perhaps maybe too much sedentary? Yeah, I would definitely say so. So one of the number one things, um, I'll give you, I think it adds up to five. Uh, so the first thing is eyes. You don't necessarily feel the pain, but you definitely feel the fatigue. Um, and that comes from a number of things, just the stress and strain you put from uh, looking at what could potentially be a small screen, depending on your setup, if you're playing on a laptop or a desktop. Um, it could also be from just the overuse of just, you know, constantly looking at or receiving blue light uh, radiation at the same time. Um, but in addition to that, when it comes to like physical parts, uh, hand and wrist are very much things that people complain about. In addition to that, the neck and the back. And those are things that are concerning to me because everything, that's, that's your core, essentially. You know, outside of your ex ex extremities right here, but essentially that's your core, your neck and your back. Um, and if you're putting a lot of strain on that, you want to make sure that you're giving a little extra TLC to your body to take care of those things. So you want to make sure you stretch. I highly recommend that um, players warm up and cool down beforehand and knowing uh, what to do and how to warm up and cool down. You always want to exercise or you always want to warm up um, the areas in which you're going to use for gaming. And if you know your neck and your back is obviously in pain, then it lets you know that that's something that you're using and outside of just the obvious of your hands and your wrists. Um, but you think about even people who play uh, when it comes to like um, controllers, you have a claw grip, which is something that makes me cringe. And it's only because the position of the hand, which is really weird. Um, so instead of, and it will be more so like this, but, uh, imagine if you had like a, let's say a PlayStation controller, you have the things that you could toggle with for directions. And then you have, um, maybe like your triggers up top and then you have like your X and your, you know, all your other buttons and things along that nature. But to get most optimal play, a lot of players have adopted, um, what's called a claw grip, which is a little bit more unorthodox, but allows them to have, um, greater actions per minute which I get it, you know, we all want to win and we all want to um, get the trigger off quick if it's a shooting game or we all want to, you know, be able to uh, change through weapons or if it's a racing game, you know, just do different things. But certain things like that, if you're playing for excessive amounts of time, because if you think about the average sports player, especially if you get into competition or professionals, um, average player spends about almost five and a half to 10 hours um, practicing. That's a lot of time. Now you multiply that by the day, um, and even when you think about players who start young, think about kids now, how old are we buying, you know, PlayStations and Xboxes and stuff like that for our youth and even for, you know, some toddlers, to be honest. And so even if it's not something as, as extreme as a claw grip, it's still the extreme stress that people at the age of eight years old, for example, are putting on to, you know, their body. But I would say hand, wrist, neck, and back are things to very much so pay attention to and find out ways to massage, relax, stretch, um, strengthen. That's another thing too, because we can also weaken our muscles at the same time. So I would say definitely pay attention to those and those will be the most problem areas that I see. No, yeah, right on. I, I know it's, it's um, you know, I think we all can relate, you know, just being in that atmosphere uh, for long periods of time and we forget. And, uh, you know, I think that the neat thing about having esports when you're working as a team and, you know, it's not always at the same time, we can essentially take a stretch or a break. Um, sometimes, you know, the, the matches, you know, are, are very fast. So it's hard to do that and we totally get it and understand. Um, it's really during that intermission time that we could do it jointly. You know, if one person is doing it, it could be a good way to do this together. Uh, and perhaps even just in, in, you know, in the middle of competition, it's going to be difficult, but afterwards to take those power down seriously. And for the youth, like you mentioned, Elise, it's also key to, to share, you know, Hey, um, if, if your child is already into gaming to some degree, whether it's competitive or casual, um, it's just important to break it up into as many little breaks as possible. 
so that you're not essentially getting accustomed to the prolonged sitting, which is what you're, you're sharing to us today. It's we're going to sit down. That's just the nature of it, but not go into these consecutive hours where it starts to feel normal and okay. <laughs> so it's almost like if you could help your mind be in that position to think, okay, I've been sitting down for maybe consecutively two hours. Maybe that's, that's the limit break, right? That's the limit that we need to start taking seriously our intentional breaks. And you know, that, that in itself takes practice because it's a behavioral change. Um, it's a shift of, of, of thinking. Yeah. And um, you know, I think that's, you know, whenever you're, you're trying to implement something that's going to be new to you, it's going to take practice, um, you know, and, and it's not going to be perfect, but uh, the fact that you're conscious of it uh, puts you in a better advantage, if you will, uh, to take care of self and ultimately to do what it is that you love to do, whether it's competitive gaming or not. Exactly. And I would even add to that, too, because, you know, we're talking about the prolonged sitting aspect, which is, you know, something that's very key and it's the root to a lot of other things. So um, I know some people may be listening and say, you know, all right, take a break. But, you know, I really want to not necessarily like drill it in. But if I can, in a way, drill it in <laughs> um, the reality of it and the importance of it, because what we also have to take into mind, to, excuse me, take into consideration is injury, but also disease. And this is the part that I really want to talk about the disease association to prolonged sitting, um, because there are, um, I, I would say there is a great correlation between sitting, health related diseases, and premature mortality you know, let's just be real. And if we are going to take it there, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that we have 35 different known diseases um, or musculoskeletal conditions that are all associated by research to prolonged sitting or to just sedentary lifestyles, I would say. And overall, we have to think about um, the common ones, diabetes, uh, coronary heart disease, high blood pressure, things like that, that we all know about. But then there's other things, you know, big and small. We have uh, varicose veins. We have uh, deep vein thrombrosis. You know what I mean? You have these things that um, could develop, such as blood clots from sitting too long. And um, for those people who maybe follow uh, different celebrities within the field of these sports, there have been a number of casualties as a result of, you know, just sedentary lifestyles in the game of esports, we've had people who have um, had collapsed lungs. There's been people who have blood clots in the knees, you know, <laughs> and blood clots in the knees could turn into something completely um, out of this world if it's not treated and taken care of. And so it is very, very, very serious. And, you know, we talk about the easy part of it, take a break. But, you know, there's so much behind the reason why I'm encouraging people to take breaks, you know, because if not, these are other things that could come along with it. We also think about other um, overuse injuries. Talking about injuries, we think about osteoarthritis. That's something that's associated from wear and tear, overuse, going back to that claw grip, going back to just... Um, just playing on a keyboard, anything like that, because uh, professional players and even collegiate players and, you know, those who are just developing or even do recreational um, gaming, you can have anywhere from on the lower end of 100, you know, actions per minute. And that is extremely low because when you look at professional players and when you look at some collegiate players, they're averaging 400 actions per minute. Now, when we talk about overuse, multiply that by the five hours they play today by the how many years let's take a I don't know let's go back to a 10 year old you know they're 10 they're getting let's say maybe 100 actions per minute then but say they turn 16 and then they get into college and they get onto a collegiate team such as esports and the wear and tear on the body is going to be more and more extreme because the stakes are going to be higher whether it's for personal gain whether it's for team gain whether it's for a championship or anything like that so it's so important to take care of self because a lot of things can be prevented if we're to take the actions that were needed to do so and that's what diseases that's what injuries that's what um just overall health and you know even though mortality is such a big word uh, when it comes to this topic, but it's true, you know, and it's not saying that esports leads to death. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is us not taking care of ourselves as gamers and putting our health as a priority and such as a high priority, such as winning, you know what I mean? If we're not putting it at that same level, then we're not respecting ourselves and the love that we have for the game. 
You know what I mean? Because if you love the game that much, you want to continue to be in it as long as you can. The retirement age for professional gamers is so low. And, you know, I think a lot of this that we're talking about is a key reason as to why. So I just want to, wanted to kind of add those elements into the conversation as well. Yeah, I know. Absolutely, Elise. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, you know, I'm going to share these thoughts and then we're going to go into a commercial break. Um, so, you, you know, for those that are listening to that, you know, game competitively or play casually or, you know, or, or you know, or know somebody that does it, um, you know, every sport is going to lead to, you know, be aware of these possible injuries. You know, there, there's, you know, pain loves association, right? It's, it's never just one area. It, there's a root of something that then gets coupled with another pain area and another because our body is just interconnected that way. Um, but I guess what's very important to know is that as you hear these statistics and as you hear all of this, as you interpret it, just know that any sport can essentially, if overly stimulated, can lead to an injury, uh, whether it's traditional sports or esports. Um, it, it's it's very evident that um, we kind of forget those areas of yeah taking the intentional breaks, um, as it was well put by Elise earlier in the um, the acronym of what that break means, um, and it's it's important to just take those step backs and to know, okay, if you're in a competitive scene and if you want to play at the highest level, at least everybody is trying to define what a better gamer is, right? Um, that it means to incorporate things of these natures, right? That this becomes almost uh, a key for a recipe for, for success for yourself, for your teammates, and possibly for your organization or your school that uh, you're representing. And so um, we oftentimes don't think of those things. And I think, again, trying to train the mind to start adopting a lot of these health and wellness practices can lead to longevity and at the same time prevent things like what you mentioned earlier, the diseases, which I, I do want to talk about after the break um, and get into that discussion. But um, don't go anywhere. If you like what you're hearing, stay tuned. There is more with Elise Freeman. So we're going to go on this brief commercial break. So stay tuned. All right, I'm ready. Let's do Arms of dubs. Crap, I got a squad on my right. I'm running in for backup. Yo, Ron, he's right there in front of you. Oh, sorry, guys, it happened again. Damn. This is the tenth one today. All right, I'm back. Someone cover me. Yeah, I see you. You got him, you got him, you got him. Yes! Yo, that's sweet. Yeah, it is. We about to win this. Guys, I can get used to this. HyperX Alloy. Built strong because it has to be. Excellent. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you. Hopefully you didn't miss us too long. Uh, we are here with Elise Freeman. She is one of our very own, representing our health and wellness division, and she's our kinesiologist consultant. And today's topic, as you can see there, is prolonged sitting in esports, the reality of injury and disease. Now, in the first segment, we talked a lot about the injury aspect of it, and really, it's not just one, it gets coupled by many. Um, there's always a root source, and Elise shared many good um, tips and, and, and helpful reminders of how you can start transitioning. And in this segment, we're going to talk about the disease part too, um, how these things can really get deep rooted even more uh, if we don't take a lot of these precautions into consideration and quite honestly, take them serious um, so that you're able to do what you love the most. But um, Elise, if you don't mind, I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know, just touched on it. Uh, really the, the main area that you don't want people to see because, well, you've seen it in your, in your line of work is things that appear to us that becomes very, even more difficult when disease gets presented. Uh, what are some of the diseases that you've seen, especially in your line of work that you can inform our audience to be really cautious about and um, know that these are realities? Yeah. So there are a number of them. Um, 
I'll stick with some of the more common ones because these things are affecting our youth today. And, you know, my, my goal overall is to make sure that we don't fall victim to these because the best thing that we could do is do what we're supposed to do to prevent these things, right? So we talk about some of the common ones such as diabetes. We talk about high cholesterol. We talk about um, high blood pressure. Um, we talk about, like I mentioned before, blood clots. Those things are uh, things that can affect us as players, but all these things are also things that we could uh, put steps and measures in between our, our life path to prevent, right? So diabetes is not something that's mandatory. High blood pressure is not a given. You know, now there are things that are hereditary, right? But even if there is some type of hereditary um, line or trait in your family or in your bloodline, there are still things that you can do to put yourself in the best position to not be diagnosed with something like that, right? And so I bring up these main ones because, you know, oftentimes now uh, the age in which people get them is younger and younger. Um, but there's so many things that our youth can do for themselves. And we as um, accountability partners, you could say, or as parents or as administrators or as coaches, we could take certain steps as well to make sure our children, that our youth, that our team, um, that those people that we love and care about don't fall victim to these things, right? Um, and so I would say those are some of the main ones, but all of those are easily prevented with good nutrition, right? And they're also prevented with activity. Um, and I would say activity is the biggest thing because, you know, truly when it comes to inactivity, I think it's about like four out of 10 adults. Um, you know, I want to say it's about four out of 10 adults, if I remember correctly. I um, mean, some information that's published from um, ACSM, which is American College of Sports Medicine. Uh, but basically the statistic is about four out of 10 adults are inactive. Now, we're not talking about like just exercising in general, inactive period, <laughs> or whatnot. And that's something that's very serious. And so we want to make sure that we're not becoming those couch potatoes or those gaming <laughs> potatoes, we could say, right? And so it's just like, if we are able to get more activity into our lifestyles, um, going back to even at 60-20, that's something that you are doing to become active, right? It's not maybe not the complete recommendation of 30 minutes a day, five days a week, um, which is the current exercise recommendation for moderate activity or 150 weeks, to, um, excuse me, 150 minutes total. That might not be the same thing as 60, 20, but it is taking that person who was on the inactive category to becoming just a little bit more active. And we want to find ways to get them from being inactive to active, to actually getting on an exercise regimen that works for them. And when I say regimen, it doesn't mean that you have to hit the gym, you know, five days a week, but some type of regimen that works for you, whether it's um, 30 minutes of walking around your neighborhood, whether it's um, going to the gym, whether it's going for a hike, whether it's going for a bike ride, you know, we're so blessed to be um, in Southern California, you know, for ourselves and for anybody who may be watching that's not in Southern California, there's still other places where you could go and rent a bike, maybe ride along the beach, you know, get some skates. There's plenty of skate shops, whether you want to do uh, skateboarding, whether you want to do rollerblading, any of those things um, that no longer make it feel like exercise, but maybe feel like enjoyment, especially for those who feel like I can't say an exercise. And I get it, you know, but finding ways that we could um, just implement more activity to prevent some of those very common things that we already know about such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and so forth. And then even going along with the same one I gave with blood clots, um, all that is is just literally <laughs> blood clots is just an accumulation. Um, and a lot of that is often associated from uh, long bouts of sitting. That's why they tell you when you're on a flight to you know the UK or Africa or things like that, get up on the plane and move around. And it's a reason why they say that um, for that very reason. Yeah, no, right on. And, and uh, you know, for, for those that are listening to, I think the, the big thing there is, again, you're promoting balance, right? Um, and, and balance is ultimately the, the ultimate goal. Um, you know, you have to break up what you do so that you can achieve some kind of balance in life. Um, because, well, we do too much of one thing. It's, it's, you know, we're already tilting a little bit there. And, uh, you know, what I'm hearing too, again, it's, you know, also, in, in the nutrition aspect of it too, it's, it, it is a different way of, you know, training. If you're going to think about competitive esports, uh, you're not going to necessarily train the same way you're going to train to prepare for, let's say football or baseball or basketball or soccer, what have you. Um, you know, you're burning, uh, you know, your calories differently. Uh, it, it's, you don't necessarily have to intake 
the same amounts and then also have to train the same way. There is a difference. There's a balance. Uh, taking notes of what it is that you're actually, um, you know, expulsing out is going to be very key. And it's why I love what you said earlier about the tracking aspect of it. Um, it's, it's, it's key, right? It's, it's the only way you know what exactly you're doing on the day-to-day -day when you're taking those steps into pursuing esports in the competitive way or in the casual way, what have you. It's just more of just monitoring oneself uh, so that you know how you're obtaining the balance because uh, it, it's, it's going to be uh, monumental what you do next. Um, and how even those, those skill sets alone, how you can even use those as preparation skills for other things that you do um, outside of that. But um, yeah, no, at least I, I think, you know, right on, I think ultimately, again, it goes to the root of we, we have to break this idea of prolonged sitting and, you know, taking, you know, those intentional breaks are going to be very important uh, to anybody that's listening because, well, whether you're playing esports or not, and if you do have an office job, that's the part that becomes very much difficult, right? How do you get to do what you love and then you actually don't change of environments or scenery? Perhaps before you get into it, you think about the, the workout regimens or the, the ability to just flex and move around to avoid potential blood clots to the body that can ultimately hurt you and harm you. Uh, and then, you know, you don't want it to be moved into something that's in the disease realm. Yeah. And I would even make a recommendation based off of something that you said. So when we talk about people who um, students, office workers, people who are indoors, right, sitting. So students, we go from class to class and sit in, you know, desk to desk or whatnot, right, from and then we go to the library to study or we go home to study or whatever the case may be. We're indoors with figure out ways. A, a suggestion would be is figure out ways to change your environment within your environment. So if you could augment your setup to have a standing desk, right? Um, and not saying you stand all day, but a sit-stand desk, you know, and I wouldn't even recommend that you stand all day. I'm not saying, you know, you sit forever, so now stand forever. Like, no, that's not the concept. Sitting is okay. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be uh, perceived as like, oh my goodness, all I do in life is sit. You know, this is terrible. It's just more so making people conscious and aware of, um, you know, our sedentary lifestyles. And whether you game or whether you don't game, we're all guilty of it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, what can we do to set ourselves up um, for our greatest success and greatest longevity? And like I said, the the retirement age of esports players is so young. It's in the 20s. It shouldn't be that. You know, it shouldn't be that at all. To me, in your 20s, you're getting the party started. You know what I mean? You going out there living life, your best life, <laughs> you know, to the absolute fullest. You know, I'm sure many people who are not in their 20s are probably like, oh, yeah, my 20s. I remember, you know. <laughs> Oh, and not. And even if you're not, if you're in your 20s now, continue to live your best life, right? But at the same time, for esports players specifically, um, what can we do to make you continue to enjoy life even after your 20s? That's the key part right there, right? Yep. When you're no longer at the top of the pedestal, when you're no longer at the top of the ranks, and now you uh, have to retire from gaming, let's not make retirement be at 23. You know, that breaks my heart to know that some players have to retire at 23 years of age because you know gamers elbow because of carpal tunnel because of things like that and if you do have carpal tunnel or if you do have gamers elbow my latter concern is going to be now you're going into the workforce an office job might not be the most optimal job for you if you're going to school to be an accountant right you're going to be behind a desk you're going to be on a computer you're going to be on a keyboard right or if you want to do construction that hammer you know Tennis elbow, gamer's elbow, whatever you want to call it, it's always repetitive motions. So it's just like what you do today can affect your tomorrow, which is why it's so important that in our 20s, in our 30s, in our teens and so forth, we do all those, um, we make all those right decisions that are going to set us up for success, for an enjoyable retirement, uh, whether it's from esports or whether it's from corporate America, right? And we want to be able to set ourselves up to have something that's, um, you know, life just worth living, right? And it goes back to the concept yeah. that we talked about before being pain free, right? In our movements. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, Alicia, yeah, again, more good points. And, and uh, we, we know we have time for one question here. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from our audience here. Uh, is there a way to get a semi full body workout when we take breaks? Thank you for the question. Yeah, actually, there is. So um, let's build up on some concepts that we talked about before 60 20, right? So every 60 minutes and do about six exercises lasting about 20 seconds of repetitions. So if you do that, you can either break it up 
And that way, if you do it, um, say you're gaming for five hours and you do that, let's say each exercise, three sets, you know, this could easily turn into a 20, 30 minute workout. It might be scattered in between, but it turns into a workout. And even if not that, you still have the opportunity to hit that great pause button and then do some um, maybe calisthenics, which is basically using your own body weight you know, or using some free weights, you can always keep uh, some dumbbells on the side of the bed or on the side of the chair. You know what I mean? Um, one of my uh, things that I would encourage for people to do is if you are at a association at a university, making sure if you have a health and wellness division, having things set up to where you have resistance bands uh, for people to go and utilize. And I would incorporate into your program a moment to where you just stop. You know, um, one thing that they have in boxing arenas, or not arenas, but in uh, gyms, is that red light, green light. You know, and red light means stop, green light means go. But if you are going, go at that time. But if that red light shows up, that means stop. And I would say, take the same concept that boxers use all the time when jump roping or when sparring or whatnot. And when you have that red light show up, that means everybody put down your machinery, put down your joystick, put down, you know, the mouse, whatever the case may be and begin to do some type of workout that's together. It could be a circuit training and circuit training is something that's really great to be done in group work. So circuit training is like you have five stations, for example, and each person hits up each station and they go one by one to each station. Um, and each station could be one minute in one minute. So that's five minutes. And if you do that five sets, boom, there you go, a nice little workout. So that'll be my recommendation for people at home, but then also at the same time, people who may be in a um, team setting or even in an association on a campus environment. You know, right on. Thank you for, for that. that. That's awesome stuff there. And thank you for the question. Um, and again, you know, we're almost at that time. And I have to ask, you know, one of the things that we always do to conclude the show is uh, if you can leave us with some words of wisdom, not that you haven't shared any, my gosh, I took a lot today. And um, again, you know, we're, we're truly grateful for your expertise and sharing and some great strategies and insights. But if you could at least just take us home with some words of wisdom. Yeah. Um, well, I will say just to kind of like culminate with what we're saying, uh, I just want people to remember that it's so much easier to prevent disease than it is to treat it. And oftentimes that same prevention measures that we take are free. You know, the treatment that we take is not always free, even if it's small, you know, ten dollars copay. You know what I mean? Those copays add up <laughs> or whatnot. But um, in addition to that, uh, just keep in mind that mobility is a gift. You know, we really have to just learn to be grateful for it and appreciate it, you know. And if you have full mobility, take pride in that, you know what I mean? And utilize it and allow your your limbs to move, you know what I mean, your your just movements to take place or whatnot because um you know they joke about it with older age but people say I, I can't move like I used to you know what I mean so if you can move good keep moving <laughs> and even if you're not doing too good in your movement still keep moving because we need that lubrication in our joints we need that mobility you know what I mean um if you don't use it you lose it and you know muscles joints all those things they get stiff um and the main reason why something gets stiff is the same reason why something gets old you know what I mean? In our refrigerator, in our cabinets, it's been sitting there too long, right? <laughs> so it's just like, we need to make sure we move it. You know what I mean? So that's what I always say. Just mobility is a gift. Please, please, please remember that. And also just keep in mind, it's so much easier to prevent disease than it is to treat it. And, you know, and if you've been sitting here watching us, you know, this all the time, I would definitely encourage some type of movement right now. That'll be my final word with this wisdom. Let's get up and move around, move it, move it, you know, Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. I'll, I'll, again, you know, at least everything you just shared, we're truly grateful to have you as part of our health and wellness division. Um, at least if, if you don't mind, maybe if you want to share to the audience uh, a place where anybody can find you for more follow-up questions, um, if you feel comfortable to share. I do feel comfortable, but I'm concerned that I don't know. If I have a, <laughs> I, 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 um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, they can contact the association and yes. contact us and then we'll forward it along yes but i'm not on social media um, <laughs> for my personal mental health and reason <laughs> there you go there you go but yeah not to 
yeah, feel free to comment on this video, contact Ruben, the association. I'm very easy to get to through them, um, but I'm not easily accessible via uh, public means. But any questions that you may have, parent, student, gamer, um, anybody, I'm more than willing to help. This is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and I just, honestly, I genuinely care about everybody that's listening um, because we are all human. We are all in this life, in this race of life together. You know what I mean? And um, I do think that the best thing I could do is share the gifts that I've been given, the knowledge that I've been um, studying to attain. And it would be so wrong of me to go to school to learn these things and not make some type of impact to share it with you. So please drop a comment, drop a line, anything like that. Got you. <laughs> thank you, Elise. And you guys all heard it. Um, thank you so much. Um, again, major shout outs to you, Elise, for the time and again, for the work that you do. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We will catch you in the next talk session. So stay safe, and we'll see you there. Bye, everybody.